athletes who seek thrills and push limits beyond what we all think is possible. People such as free soloist Mike Reardon. There's all forms of rock climbing. There's climbing close to the ground where you're doing more of the physical pursuit. There's climbing with a rope and you use the rope kind of like a video game where you get a do-over if you screw up. There's climbing where you're using the rope by actually pulling your way up the rock. And then there's just you and the rock. That's what I do. I'm a free solo rock climber. It's fun, it's exploratory, it is the ultimate excitement. It's one of those things that if you do it once, you get an idea. You do it several times, you're getting a little closer. Do it every day for about 15, 16 years, you understand it. Otherwise, any kind of explanation that I give you, words fail. You know, he kind of sees this as a gift. I mean, it, it's something he can do. It's something that not many people can do, very few people can do. And so I see some humbleness. I see, I mean, he's, you know, if you talk to him, meet him, you know, he's uh, very outspoken, tells you what's on his mind. Uh, you know, he can suck the oxygen out of a room. And, and yet, you know, he's just kind of, I think, a little bit odd and, you know, by all, by all of this, you know, just what he's been able to do. Throughout his free soloing career, there's been several whispers of disbelief and controversy surrounding Michael Reardon. Reardon has spent the last two years laying to rest any questions about his credibility and proving he is arguably right now one of the best free soloists in the world. When you're uh, hundreds of feet off the ground, you just feel a certain kind of power that you don't get when you're free climbing with a rope um, or next to a bolt or anything like that. You just tap into this kind of subconscious energy and you're, you just feel stronger, quicker, um, more on top of it, more coordinated than you ever do with a rope. It's the ultimate expression, I think, of, of climbing. I mean, it's just, it's moving, it's, uh, it's pure. And you know, when you do it, it, it's not, you don't necessarily feel this elation, you just feel a peace, a calm. Uh, it's, it's just a wild, it's hard to describe if you haven't done it, and it's even hard to describe having experienced it once or twice. The rock has never treated me badly, as long as I've always treated it kindly in return. It sounds silly, mystical stuff, but there is something truly remarkable in the trust relationship. I trust in this rock being in a certain stature. I feel that if I treat it accordingly, She'll allow me to, you know, go ahead and have a great day. And that trust relationship is very vital. It's no different than the trust relationship in a partnership when you're climbing. I trust that this person is going to catch me if I fall and I'm not going to die. Well, I'm taking that trust level to the next level when it comes to the rock. Free soloing, people just don't understand it. But part of it is because society gets really homogenized. They they take words and they abuse them so bad. They take words like extreme, and now they're describing golf butts. I mean, a golf butt is not extreme. A 20-foot ollie is not extreme. Um, so many people abuse it to the point that everybody just kind of goes, OK, great, another thing with extreme. No, this is extreme. You're up there, for, you can be up there for 45 minutes, or an hour and any second in that 45 minutes. If you lean back, you know, your foot slips, a rock falls, a rainstorm comes through, and the rock gets wet and it's slippery. I mean, anything can happen, and if anything goes wrong, you're basically gonna fall to your death. There's an extreme amount of focus within what I term the eight-foot eggshell. A couple feet above me, a couple feet below me, a little bit around me. 
that's pretty much all I can see. That's all I'm paying attention to. I, yes, I understand that I'm a certain distance above or whatever, but it's almost a relief when you get to a point where I'm not reversing this. All right, well, now all I have to worry about is just, it's not even worried. Now all I have to concentrate on is moving forward. As a videographer, especially, you know, if I want to be up there getting the good shots, I want to be right above the hardest move, looking down, seeing his fingers, his hands, his face, and you're in his space. I mean, John, these guys talk about sort of being a 10-foot eggshell or like 10-foot space. Well, I'm three feet away, so I, I know that I'm in their space. You know, the relationship between a photographer and a soloist, you know, he's passing by you, you know, 800 feet off the deck, you know, there's a certain measure of trust there. It's kind of quiet, you're not bugging him, you're not showing fear, trepidation, you're just, you know, there, you're the fly on the wall trying to get the shot. The stakes are so high, and it's inspiring to see people like calm, moving smoothly, when there's like, you know, if I know if I were in that position, I'd be freaking out. My mind would be playing such games with me. Um, so it's like, I'm really drawn to filming it, but it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's also nerve wracking. I enjoy climbing on a rope. I enjoy falling every now and then. I mean, I enjoy going for it. I boulder all the time I, with crash pads and all that. And I, and I'm a huge chicken when it comes to doing certain things on a rope. I mean, I have a rope on because I expect to fall. That's why you put a rope on. You think you have a chance of falling. So it's kind of humorous when people think that all I do is this free soloing stuff. No, I train. I train for it. But I train to climb the rock in the purest style possible. Soloing is just cool. It's just fun. I mean. God, the freedom just to go ahead and play. I mean, it's a playground up there. I just feel extremely lucky to have that ability. And in turn, it makes me train harder to have an even greater ability for it. Loving is what I got. I said, remember that. Loving is what I got.